we are live now. Also, I'm led to believe. <laughs> Hello. I can see by the chat you're in on YouTube already. Lovely pre-show we got going on here. Now, can I ask you on the pre-show chat right now, um, how is the audio sounding? How is my audio sounding? Because I've done a few tweaks and hopefully it's uh, a heck of a lot better than it has been. So let me know in the chat right now, how is the audio sounding? Is there any distortion, anything that you notice that is abnormal? Just uh, type it in the chat. And if it's perfect, say perfect. <laughs> the real test will be adding the reverb. If I add reverb, is there any distortion there or anything at all? Hey, we're getting loads of thumbs up. Good, good, good. Sounding good. That's positive because I made a few tweaks and... Um, I'll tell you about them uh, during the show. David Silk in Adelaide, Australia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for letting me know about my outro. Hopefully that will be fixed now and you won't have to jump for your volume control. <laughs> Rooted the audio in a different way and uh, wanted to eliminate any distortion. Good. Hopefully nice and loud now. Hopefully louder than uh, it used to be kind of boosted the signal if you like so now music should be the right volume audio I play from Adobe Audition should be good everything should be good welcome in by the way if you're just coming along the show's getting started in two and a half minutes this is known as the pre-show bit where you can you can chat away David was first in on the chat today then Divakish who I think I've seen around the uh, community forums Jess is in yeah we're here Rovigo55 from the community forums in as well. Getting ready for the party. Vixen Designs. Joe Sami. Hey. Good to have you there, Joe. Christopher. Ready to go. Sounding good. The Gabrielson. Peter Young. Thank you, Peter. Tony. Le Pedra Tolson. Who else have we got? Martina. Welcome back, Martina. Good to see you there. Mark Anthony. Awesome sound. Thank you. Juan, perfect. Travis, crystal clear. Mr. Mega Radio UK. Hi, Mike. Audio is good and clear. Excellent. I think I've solved all the problems then. Yes. I'll tell you what I did in about 90 seconds. Amara, hello, greetings from Egypt. Nice. Peter Labros in. Buenos Dias to Juan in Mexico voiceover is in hello voiceover what a name Ganesh Gani hi Okaleki hello nice to have you in get ready here we go starting soon And here we are again. Oh, look at this. Hopefully I'm not going all pixelated. I know YouTube throws a fit when I stream and I do really busy things uh, in the backdrop like uh, the, the flashing LED lights behind me. <laughs> Just let me know in the chat if that's a little bit pixelated. Uh, apologies if it is. Anyway, welcome along to the show. This is Music Radio Creative Live. My name is Mike Russell. Actually, I can do one of these, these funky little things over here. Uh <laughs> <laughs> tells you who I am. Mike Russell from Music Radio Creative. How how swish and how fun. Uh, so in this session, we're talking about how to make your voice sound 
better. And coming up in 15 minutes, every 15 minutes, as usual during the show, I mention your comments. So get them in wherever you're watching on YouTube, on Facebook Live, on Periscope, on Twitch. We're getting a, we're getting a little bit of a, a small snowball effect happening on Twitch now. So it's good to see、uh, that some of you are joining in on Twitch as well. Nice to have you there. Um, so, yes, making your voice sound better. It's、uh, something we all come across. It's a, it's a common question. I get it in my inbox lots. And I'm sure now we have the, the community forums rolling.、Uh, you will be able to <laughs> comment on that and,、uh, and exchange your own tips. In fact, let me show you because、uh, it's, it's worth that you take a look over there at the community forums. As you can see, busy, 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 busy. I find it really hard to keep up. I have to dedicate at least half an hour to an hour、uh, of my day in, in segments, not all in one go, of, of just. Going through the posts and、uh, trying to respond as and where I can.、Um, but actually, to tell you the truth right now,、uh, most people in there are really, really、uh, knowledgeable and have expertise in areas that I don't have. So I love it when I see questions coming in. And before I, I even get the chance to get in an answer, somebody else has got a, an answer. And I'm like, wow, I would never have said that. And that's an amazing answer.、Uh, so the place you need to go is community.musicradiocreative.com. Okay, that's the long URL that will take you. To our little community forum. And it is little, it only started a week and a half ago,、uh, but it's growing. So, community.musicradiocreative.com. As you can see, the latest topics include、uh, what headphones should I have?、Uh, Joe's list of helpful things. Joe is, is there in the chats and he's doing a great job of curating this kind of Like crowdsourced、um, uh, thing that you're putting together of anything I mention, any tips, any equipment I mention,、uh, you're posting it in the forum, and then Joe is just collating it into a mega list of audio tips and tricks. So, well done, Joe.、Uh, list of music beds in there, podcast formats for your show.、Um, it's not the same on the stream without him, referring to our friend Caddo.、Uh, can I add a track to multiple buses in Adobe Audition?、Uh, all kinds of stuff. And, and、uh, yeah. <laughs> Deleting posts. Obviously, people still getting used to how the forum I'm still getting used to how the forum works. It's an awesome piece of software and you can do so much with it.、Uh, so, we're going to be developing that out,、uh, maybe even adding the ability for you to upload audio because that would be good because it's music radio creative. So, go ahead and join. But now,、uh, let's not hesitate any further and get into making voices sound better. And I thought I'd start with a demonstration on one of our、uh, wonderful female voices here at Music Radio Creative. Have a listen to her. Her name is Chelsea. Many Few presents Electronic Heaven. Now, hopefully, you can all hear that nice and clearly, and it sounds really good already. So, when I say make your voice sound better, I don't mean your voice is rubbish. Let's make it sound good. I mean, beefing it up, making it sound good, making it pop、uh, for whatever reason. Now, this show is for you if you're a voiceover artist, if you're a podcaster. It's for you if you do audiobook narration. It's for you if you want to just up your game.、Uh, maybe you've got your own YouTube channel and you do commentary. I mean, a big thing in streaming is、uh, streaming with your voice on the microphone while you're playing a game. So maybe you want to make your, your voice sound good.、Uh, whatever it is, hopefully by the end of this hour, you will have picked. Up and taken away a few tips that you can use. So let's look at Adobe Audition first and foremost. In、uh, 10 minutes, I'm going to hop over to OBS and show you a few things. OBS Studio, by the way, is my live streaming software that I use、uh, to stream this show to you online and also、uh, records the show so I can make the podcast afterwards. I'll show you a few tips using OBS because I know a lot of YouTubers use OBS to stream and there are ways that you can improve your voice. So let's copy this、uh, to a new file、uh, and I'll just paste、uh, Chelsea's audio in here because. This is going to be destructive. And when I say destructive in an audio editor, it means any changes I make stay there on the waveform. And if I was to save it,、uh, they would save into the wave file.、Uh, whereas if I go into multi track, and let's create a new session, voice sound better. And、uh, we'll just pop that in there. So any changes I make here and effects I put on in the multi track、uh, will be non destructive, meaning that the waveform will not be affected. And if I save the file, it will save the raw, unedited version.、Uh, by the way, great to see so many people watching today.、Uh, do comment on Facebook Live in particular. I see there's a lot of you watching there. So do get into the comments and let me know where you're watching from on Facebook. Right, so I'm going to show you、uh, a technique of mine that I introduced, gosh, it must have been back in a while ago. Maybe, actually, 
I can check on the YouTube channel. It's probably a good idea to check. It's the ENCN technique, EQ, normalize, compress, normalize. And I'm just going to head over to the, the channel and then drag it down. Uh, so we're going to youtube.com slash music radio creative. That's my channel. And uh, as you can see, the live shows are here. You can also set reminders for upcoming shows here. Um, so I've got, if you search on my channel here, how to make your voice sound better, you will find my secret source video. And I'm going to take you through that. So yeah, four years ago, I created that video. Uh, and uh, it's it's been a smash hit on the channel, uh, garnering 1,174,309 views. And uh, the channel in total has had uh, 10 million views now, which is amazing. Thanks to you uh, for tuning in and watching the videos. But that's by far are the most popular video on my channel. So what do I mean by ENCN? Well, EQ is the first thing we do. So let's go in and put some EQ on Chelsea's voice. So into effects, and we want to go to filter and EQ. And I always like to use the parametric equalizer. That is my go-to equalizer. Actually, in the video that is popular that I just demoed to you, I use a graphic equalizer, a 30 or 20 band graphic EQ. Um, but I prefer parametric now just because you can you can be a little more precise with it. Um, and there are other EQs. The FFT filter is good for adding like um, effects like you're on the phone or you're in a nightclub. Uh, notch filter is good for eliminating uh, noisy, terrible frequencies. And scientific filter is good for rolling off frequencies. So that's why I go to parametric EQ. Before I do, though, let me show you a, a, a normal 20 band EQ. EQ and you can have a look at that up close and you can see that it's got all the different frequencies here ranging from bass uh, to high end and what I used to do I've kind of updated my workflow a little bit now is I used to add a little bit of mic sparkle uh, that was actually the name of my preset I would add on sort of from about 2.8k I'd start ramping up the EQ here and actually if we open up the preview window as well and I zoom back out you will be able to see what's happening to the audio in real time as I move these EQ bands up so watch as it updates. Not too much at the moment. I'm just literally adding on that sparkle. So you're getting kind of like a, an uplift here in the trebles. Many few presents. And we'll listen to it without the EQ. Many few presents. A lot flatter. So we're just adding on and again, maybe... Many few presents. So we're getting a little bit sibilant there. Um, so yeah, the, while the graphic equalizer is good and you can do a certain amount with that, you can't be as precise and as notchy as you can be with the parametric EQ. Let me show you that. So filter and EQ, parametric equalizer here. And this is fun because now we're doing exactly the same as we were doing in the 20 band EQ. But this time we are, instead of moving up faders, we're moving points here. So um, when I selected my first point was, actually let's grab point three here. My first point was about 2.8K. Now I can start moving up here and I can make a similar shape like this here, but it might not be the shape that I want to go for in the end for Chelsea's voice. I might say, well, actually the high frequencies, if I enhance them, particularly there's a difference between male and female voices, obviously, um, it might introduce a little bit too much sibilance. So what I like to do is set the parametric EQ to the voice. Many few presents electronic heaven. So we're listening up to the highs here. Many few presents electronic heaven and we can hear the sibilance starts around here many few presents so you hear how that comes in there so i don't want to enhance that frequency many few presents okay up to the very high end many few presents and then maybe increase something around many here. few presents electronic heaven and again around many here. few presents and the best thing about this is I can sweep around and find the frequency I want to enhance on Chelsea's voice. So let's do that. If I want to get more accurate, I can go down to, uh, this is point number three I'm working with, as you see. I can switch it on and off. Uh, I can actually move this and widen it out or narrow it down. So let's narrow it down. And now it becomes more like the, um, the graphic equalizer faders. Many few presents electronic heaven. You see, that they're all a bit boxy, those mid-range frequencies. Many few presents electronic heaven oh now there's a nice peak there at about 10k many few presents electronic heaven many few presents okay so i've played with the eq a little bit and i'm adding on some highs there let's see what we can do with the mids whether we want to add or take away listen many few presents electronic heaven many few presents 
Electronic heaven. Many, many, many. Okay, a bit muddy around there. Let's pull that down a bit. Many few presents. And then with the low end, I can do this. I can change the shape of this uh, and roll off anything around here. Many few presents. And that, that little shape icon there, if I click it off, see, it gives a, a, a kind of more like a, a ski slope uh, kind of dive, which we don't want. We kind of want the roll off dive like that. Many few presents. And here we're just rolling off base anything really below 100 hertz, which is uh, not too rumbly or too much of a problem anyway. So I'm kind of happy with that. Everything looks good. Um, if we just zoom out now and have a have a little look up there, you will see that nothing is really going too hot. I mean, there is this peak around here that's kind of spiking around zero dB, but everything is looking pretty good. So uh, we'll apply that to Chelsea's voice. That's on. So that's the E of ENCN. Uh, then obviously normalize. You can get that really quickly in Audition by going to favorites, normalize to 0.1 dB. And yeah, it probably has squeezed it down a little bit because of that peak. And the best thing, because we're working in 32-bit, I mean, I, I could do this and make it all this. Now you see you're running really hot. Many few. And you're running hot on the meters there. Uh, but if I just go back to favorites and normalize again, boom, uh, we've got no problems there. Uh, everything is back to normal. So you can run hot now with 32-bit. And I know uh, those of you who are regular viewers, you probably heard me say that for the... Uh, 20th time, but uh, to anyone who's new, it's important that you understand that you can do that with a digital editor. So, really fun. We've added EQ, we've normalized. Uh, now let's go into compress. Uh, now, here's a little updated version. This Obviously, you're going to get lots of updates uh, since I recorded that video, How to Make Your Voice Sound Better, four years ago. And I'm going to show you effects that I've found to, to work better for different purposes. Now, with Chelsea, um, usually I would go into amplitude and compression and I would mess about with dynamics processing and you can kind of draw on the kind of compression you want here. Uh, so let's see if we go to, to default. This is this is what I, I used to use, but I'll show you a much simpler way of doing this. So with the, uh, the dynamics processing here, let's bring it right into view so you can see everything. Um, I would do something like this. So I would uh, I would bring the uh, the ratio down a bit. I would uh, probably just move this out a little bit. Uh, so we get you can get a hard knee or you can spline the curves and get a, a soft knee like that. Uh, and you'll see if I turn off spline curves, you get a more aggressive compression going on uh, just behind the, the effect. But if I spline the curves, you get a softer compression. So that's the kind of compression I would add. Uh, as you can see, we're going at about six and a half to one ratio. Uh, threshold anything above minus 26.49 uh, dB. That's giving actually a nice compression. Many few presents electronic heaven. Okay, so actually I'm going to apply that. Let's just listen to the difference with a soft knee. Many few presents electronic heaven. So it's not as harsh, but I think in this case I do want to beef it up. Uh, there we go. And then zoom out so you guys can see. And then we'll go into favorites, normalize again. Uh, so there we go. We've done ENCN. Okay, EQ normalize, compress, normalize. That's how I usually work in the waveform. Uh, I do have different settings now in my multi-track uh, using my Adobe Audition presets, uh, but that's generally how I would make a voice sound better. And we can have a listen uh, to what's happened here by uh, comparing. So we've got this. Many few presents. And then we have got this. Many few presents. So I think you'll agree now listening that this. Many few presents. Sounds better than this. Many few presents. It's uh, You've brought out the, the trebles, you kind of EQ'd it nicely, it's been compressed. Now here's the other compressor that I wanted to show you before I get into your comments. So I'm just going to undo the normalization and compression step there. So we're back to the, uh, we've done the EQ and the normalization, we're about to add compression. Effects, amplitude and compression, and we want to go for the single band compressor here. Now this, if you've ever worked in radio and you've worked with those uh, wonderful uh, boxes that appear in radio stations, this single band compressor should be super familiar to you. And as you can see behind me here, uh, it's having a super big effect on that voice, really beefing it up. And that's because we've got a huge ratio of 14 to 1. So first let's bring that down and I'll show you how a, a smaller ratio affects the voice. Keep bringing that down and further down. Now I don't believe that preview window is updating. So let's go back in and reopen the uh, single band compressor. So now we have got uh, the output gain is way too high. Let's turn that down to zero dB so you can watch. Okie dokie. So um, bringing the threshold 
up to minus 9 dB, we're adding less compression. Bringing it down to around minus 20, which is where I'd usually shoot for with a voice like this, you can see it's uh, crushing the voice down. Move the ratio down from 4 to 1 to 2 to 1, and you'll notice the difference. More audio is, is being allowed to breathe by the compressor. Uh, and again, attack, I usually keep that down really low, 0 or 0.3 milliseconds. You can have a longer release or a slower release if you like. It's up to you. Uh, if you move the release down, you can see these spikes are starting to appear. So I kind of like to have it set around, around about 100 milliseconds. And then we'll bring this up. Keep those chats coming in. I'm going to get to your chats in a minute. And as you can see, this is a more beautiful uh, and much easier to set compressor, particularly if you're a newbie to the world of audio compression. Uh, you really can achieve stunning effects with a single band compressor in Adobe Audition uh, without having to know how a compressor works. Many few presents. Compared to. Many few presents. And now you should really hear the difference there. Many few presents. In a second, I'll do a little bit of DSing because I think it could do with that. Uh, then I'll get into what I did in Ob Studio to make my audio sound better for live streaming. Uh, and then we'll probably move on to a male voice so you can hear how it works with a male voice. But I see your chat is coming in, so I really, really appreciate that. Let's get into uh, the, the, the chat mode so we can have a look at what is going on in your, your lovely, lovely chat uh, happening here. So do keep those comments coming in and I will make sure to to shout you out. First of all, starting with the, the wonderful uh, Facebook Live community watching. And we have Joe in. Uh, I'm live on Facebook. Personally, can't get it on, on YouTube. Oh, I wonder why, Joe. That's strange. Um, others are watching there, so I think that's all working okay. Uh, Isabella's in on Facebook Live. Richard Daly's there. Hi, Richard Daly. Nice to see you. Uh, and Richard's asking, how much is too much compression? I find it really hard to listen to some heavily compressed podcasts through earbuds. Now, this is a great, great question, uh, particularly for podcasting. I think that you can't really go too wrong if you add single band compressors or uh, just general compression. Again, don't go nuts, uh, although you've got to consider where people are listening to the podcast. I mean, compression is really, it's a great thing because it makes the, the smaller part of your audio louder and it makes the louder peaks softer. So if you're listening in an environment like a workspace with heavy machinery, you should be able to hear the voice and the music and everything together. I add a bit of compression to this stream. Uh, again, you know, if you're listening in earbuds, it should be okay. The one thing you want to be uh, scared of and aware of when you're compressing for podcast listeners, listening in earbuds is using the uh, something like the uh, a multi-band compressor uh, too heavily uh, because what you'll find is if you don't set a multi-band compressor correctly you can end up really enhancing these horrible frequencies and that's where you kind of get you know it's literally different bands different frequencies are being compressed at different levels and it's it's making your voice sound very abnormal in fact i can uh, i can quickly demonstrate how you can go horribly wrong with a multi-band compressor so here's uh, chelsea uh, she's already been compressed many few presents and that sounds okay to me i wouldn't mind that as a podcast listener probably want it to be ds though um but if i go into effects amplitude and compression and start on the multiband compressor use this with caution uh the only time i'd really use a multiband compressor is if i want to get audio sounding like it's been on the radio you know because all radio stations have multiband compressors running uh, and they 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 have that kind of hot sound like kind of hey we're live and we're broadcasting and we sound really good because we got so much bass and so much treble and it's all being enhanced. Oh, don't I sound good? I'm a radio host, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, what you can do here is let's go to default and start playing and let's set this up all crazy. Many few presents electronic heaven. Right, I'm going to really compress the trebles. Many few presents electronic heaven. And actually, funny enough, just because I compress the trebles, you can hear that it's already de-essing it, which is cool. Many few presents electronic heaven but you see here now i'm pulling out frequencies i'm compressing some frequencies i'm not compressing others the bass is completely uncompressed many few presents and now to me that sounds really weird in my headphones have a look at those settings i mean you'd never in your right mind set a multi-band compressor like this but this is definitely how multi-band compression can easily go wrong many few presents 
You see, I think you'll all agree that sounds pretty terrible. Uh, so, yeah, steer away from multiband compressors. Uh, and, yeah, don't go too nuts. A ratio of two or three to one for podcasting, maybe even just two to one, and a little bit of hard limiting uh, to get things sounding good. Let's uh, scroll through and have a look at your wonderful comments coming in on YouTube as well. What have we got here? Uh, so we got uh, 30 Rock NBC in the house. Christopher's there. Uh, Emma's in from Egypt. Uh, Travis, uh, really looking forward to this session, he says. Uh, what else have we got here in the chat? You're all commenting about the uh, the countdown. Uh, yeah, Rovigo55, thanks so much. Reached 70,000 followers on the YouTube channel, waiting for the next time goal. I'm aiming, guys, if you can help me with this by sharing the channel in any way, I'd appreciate it. I'm aiming for 100,000. And I'll, I'll tell you a secret now between you and I, um, but when you reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, um, they send you a, a little play button through the post, I believe. Now, I'm not so concerned about that. Yeah, it'll be lovely, of course, and I'll put it up on my wall. Um, but um, they have things called YouTube spaces around the world. Now, you might already have heard of these. There's one in New York, uh, there's one in Paris, there's one in Berlin. Uh, they're all over the world. There's there's one in London. Obviously, that's my local YouTube space. And I've been in there a few times, and YouTube spaces are amazing. I mean, they have all the gear you'd want, you'd ever want to film video. And I think you need a minimum of 10,000 subscribers to get in the door there. But once you have 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, you can use these spaces for free. And they give you all the video equipment, all the expertise. They have great people working there that can help you out to film and stuff. You also get free snacks. That's, that's an aside. Um, but when you hit 100,000 subscribers, they take you a little more seriously at YouTube Space. And uh, you're allowed to hold your own event there. And they kind of they cover everything for you. So there's no uh, problem with like you know hiring an event space. I mean, London's not a cheap place to put an event on. Uh, you can, yeah, you can use their space. They provide the catering. They provide the space. Uh, you're allowed to bring people in. So what I'd like to do when I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which were about uh, 29,000 <laughs> or so off, uh, once I hit that goal, I will invite all of you uh, to come to a big uh, audio production, music radio creative party at the YouTube space in King's Cross, in London. That's my plan. Okay, that's my goal. So I'm, I'm, that's the first time I've shared that as well. So hopefully we can um, we can work together to make that happen. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, we've got Marcus in. We've got PB the vlogs as well. Uh, just got in. Uh, what else have we got? Mark's watching from the Philippines. Dylan's in. Watched uh, that video the other day. Nice. Paul Orr in from Knoxville. Watching on YouTube. So I can do a super chat, but I don't believe I can on my phone. So I'm going to have to move to the PC. Well, thanks, Paul. Really appreciate that. And I didn't know they, they don't allow you to do super chats on the uh, on the phone. Diego's in. Uh, Joe's made it back over to YouTube, which is great to see. Coop, hey, Mike, you know all of the stuff like how to make sound effects and stuff like that. But what do you do with this knowledge instead of tutorials? Do you make music and sound for music or what? So I guess asking uh, what I do, and Isabella has kindly posted a link to uh, musicradiocreative.com. Uh, that's what I do. If you go there, that's what I do. Uh, Conal's in. Look behind you. There's a spider. Uh, <laughs> Not too scared of spiders. Um, used to live in Australia. Came across uh, huntsman spiders often, so... They don't phase me too much. <laughs> and David's in with Splat. Yeah, I know. David's an Aussie, so he's he's not phased by spiders, I'm sure. Uh, Gravity Kin G9, does ENCN work for singing tracks as well? I don't see why not. In fact, you could apply this kind of principle to any track. This is general vocal compression that I am showing you. Uh, what else have we got? Conal, I wish Adobe Audition could work as a virtual microphone and pass through... Uh, filtered audio in real time. Ah, Conal, I've got something for you in just a moment that might help. Uh, PB the vlogs. Mike, are you using any effects on your voice now as you're presenting? Yes, this microphone here is going into a DBX286S, uh, and I've done a tutorial how I set that up on my channel. Uh, it's also now going into a Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK, uh, and then I EQ it a bit. I put on some treble, I put on some bass, I put on the mid-range, and I've got a sweeping mid-range on my mixing desk. Uh, so yes, it all does sound uh, rather nice. Not much compression, though, just a little bit. 
Um, what else have we got? Learning Good Stuff, says Marcus, uh, Mr. Mega Radio UK. Have you stopped using loudness maximizer? Uh, no, no, I use that sometimes. I generally use loudness maximizer when I've finished a production. Uh, thanks, Paul, for signing up for the VIP channel, by the way. Uh, and I like watching the cliff notes for quick refreshers. Awesome. Shamir's in. Michał's in from Poland. Juan, uh, thanks so much for the support there. Uh, really cool stuff. Is there a way to make my voice robotic without affecting pitch? Check out my channel. There are a few tutorials there. Uh, what microphone is the best for voiceovers? I quite like the Audio-Technica AT4033ASM, uh, but TLM103, if you've got the bucks for it, is definitely uh, where you want to go. That's kind of voiceover standard. So I did promise to show you uh, a couple of things, and I can do so. Uh, so uh, first of all, you want to know if there's a, a real-time uh, Adobe Audition in real time to my voice. I don't mind if there's some latency. Oh, no, that wasn't the question. It's uh, can I use a virtual microphone? Okay, yeah, so you're asking about that, and there is definitely a way that you can do this. So with my OBS, I was having all kinds of problems doing this live stream, and what I ended up purchasing in the end was a piece of software from Rogue Amoeba called Loopback. Now, it's, uh, it's again, it's not cheap for a piece of software. It's $99, but this is Loopback. And what I like about this... I had problems with my stream for a long time, which obviously is not good because it's an audio stream, so it really should sound good. And um, I had problems that when I was going above a certain level on my mixing desk, it was distorting the hell out of things and it didn't sound good. And my chain was essentially running out of the, uh, the master XLR ports on my Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK. Uh, those two XLRs were running into the two XLRs on a Scarlett 2i2, um, but because I haven't got any pad buttons and I can't control the volume on the 2i2, uh, it was running super hot into the 2i2. Like, I mean, I had to turn both volume knobs right the way down to bottom, and still, if like I peaked too much, it would like go into the red and start distorting. So what I thought I needed to do is cut out the Scarlett 2i2 and just go straight from my Soundcraft mixing desk, which acts as an audio interface and kind of sound card, straight to you on the stream and cut out the middleman, as it were, cut out the audio interface. So I then uh, thought, well, hang on. Yes, this Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK, uh, it's got like, uh, I think it's got 14 outputs and 12 inputs. So it's like amazingly cool piece of gear. Um, and I have on channel 13 and 14, an output of the master mix so anything I do any EQ any fades I do here like if I fade in a jingle now like I do with this I can kind of fade that up and down and you'll hear that it all works rather nicely um, so, but with OBS, uh, they don't allow you to assign uh, channels, channel numbers. Uh, so I had a real problem because if I assign channel one and channel two, that's my two Heil PR40 microphones, and I can't play you any audio from my computer. So this piece of software here, Loopback, allows me to take all of the audio from my mixing desk and route it into a virtual audio device. It creates a brand new device for me. So I've named this Livestream Audio and I said I want my Soundcraft signature there. I can choose other stuff here. Got all my like apps and stuff like that. But Soundcraft Signature 12. And then I dragged uh, channels 13 and 14, which is the master mix output via USB, uh, to a new channel, left one and two of live stream audio. And then when I bring in, so now this, this is running, even if I close the program down, that device still exists. And then if I pull in OBS for a second, and you're going to get that weird infinity effect, because uh, you're going to see a stream of a stream of a stream. Um, but then if I go into the, um, the audio here, mic slash aux on OBS, which is free and open source, by the way, you can download this for free and go into uh, properties here. Uh, then I can select live stream audio and it takes uh, input one and two. And I should be able to pan from the left and right. This is on the left and this is on the right. Uh, did that pan for you? Let me know in the comments if that was um, that was panning okay for you. But hopefully I should be able to do uh, panning like this and I should be able to do effects like this and it all works really, really sweet. So I'm really happy with that. The other thing I noticed that was causing a little bit of a problem and I did a tutorial on OBS and I set up, if you go into properties here, uh, no, sorry, if you go into filters here, 
you have the ability to add in audio filters. They have a built-in compressor, gain, noise gate, and I noticed I had some of these left in, and I took them out, and that seemed to clean up my audio as well. So really, this has worked tremendously well for my setup, uh, buying Loopback from Rogue Amoeba, uh, which actually, for those of you who are interested in posting it, I, I think Rogue Amoeba makes some really good stuff. Uh, so I am going to um, just grab grab a link to uh, their app. It's called Loopback. They make other stuff such as Airfoil, and some of you might uh, do live streams with Nicecast. Uh, but Loopback is pretty cool. So let me make a short link to that and post it to you. If you're interested in, in grabbing Loopback, it's great for podcasters and such like uh, who would like to route multiple audio devices uh, to one virtual device on there. This is Mac only, by the way. I mean, I'm sure there are other ways to do it in, in Windows. Uh, but mrc.fm slash Loopback will take you directly to that product. Uh, and uh, yeah, I recommend it. It's uh, kind of solved all my problems, uh, which is great news. Peter's saying, yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Uh, Bob, yeah, the panning worked okay. It panned out, says Conor. Absolutely. Uh, so really, really good stuff. Um, what else have I got here to answer? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, yes, latency is often an issue when you use uh, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, ENCN does work on uh, on singing tracks and stuff like that. Now, loudness maximizer. I remember Liam was asking me about using the loudness maximizer. This is a real flat line kind of sausage effect. And in Adobe Audition, you can access it via effects, special mastering here. And then if I go to default uh, and click up to the preview window here, pull that up, look at this, and it goes completely flat line. I mean, this would be like a total imaging voice. Many few presents. Totally loud there as well. Totally loud. Many few pre Roll it off a bit so we don't get so such a harsh harsh compressor compressor. <laughs> Many few presents. There you go, but sounding really loud. Take the output gain down maybe a little bit. As you can see, it's it's doing a bit of limiting as well, that loudness maximizer and really clipping off the audio. But I don't like it on the uh, on the raw audio, only really on the on the final thing. Uh, what other comments have we got? Is Adobe Audition better than Pro Tools? Uh, I love Adobe Audition. It's the software I've used since Cool Edit Pro. Uh, I remember that cool jingle, Cool Edit Pro 2.0. And yeah, I've dipped into Pro Tools a few times, but I have always returned to Adobe Audition. Mainly I use Pro Tools uh, when I was working in radio. Uh, a lot of radio stations have Pro Tools in the in the booths. Uh, so yeah, but I always just just like the fuzziness of Adobe Audition. How about Audacity, says Emma. Uh, yeah, I've got Audacity here, but I don't use it ever. <laughs> if you're getting started, it might be a good idea for you. Uh, is there a way of having infinite echo? There is actually on my mixing desk. It is called, uh, let's see, I think it's the tape effect. Something like this, this, like this, 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 like 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 this, so that kind of goes on for a while. Or um, what about a delay mod? A delay mod. A delay mod. Um, or uh, there was one that really went off. I think it might have been lo-fi. Fi. 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 Maybe not. Uh, let's see what else we got uh, here. Delay by two seconds. Hello. Delay by two seconds. Hello. By two seconds. Isn't that great? Those are the uh, inbuilt uh, features on my Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK. Really good onboard effects, actually. So if you consider a mixing desk, uh, you've got the budget for this one. Highly, highly recommend it. Uh, Dave is right, though. They do both have their own pros and cons. Uh, what else have we got in here? Uh, left and right uh, is coming out all over the place. Oh, have I got the channels the wrong way around? Left was right and right comes left. Really? Is that, is that on the left for you? That should be on the left. And that should be on the right. Uh, my OS X is virtual. Oh, you're running a virtual machine, are you? I have my earbuds in the wrong ears. Hopefully, I'm, I'm panning the right way around. Uh, over on Facebook Live, we've got Doyesh. Uh, hi, Mike. I'm tuned in and logged in. Click media. Hello. Enjoying the show. Uh, thanks, Richard. Really appreciate you. Uh, so let's hop back in and do some more stuff uh, with another voiceover. Let's find someone like, uh, 
we got Darren here, who's a great British male voice for music radio creative. Let's listen to one of Darren's liners. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. And as you can hear, recorded in a, a beautiful studio. I know Darren has a wonderful studio in London. And if you actually look here at the uh, his, his noise floor and uh, all of the audio going on between his speaking bits, he really does have a very awesome soundproof room and you can tell if if that that is an an amazing noise floor just to see a little bit of red down there in the bass that was basically bass rumble and anyway i would roll that off when working with a voice so um really excited to be working with darren's voice for instance show you the difference uh, if i was to record something quickly because i am now using a lot of cpu power my computer doesn't usually make a noise but there is a bit of a fan running hello this is me and you've just seen my noise floor. So look at that in spectral frequency now. If we zoom right in, you can see, obviously, I've got the, the 100 hertz kind of stuff there in red. But you can see lots of stuff going on in there. Now, if I wanted to, I could just marquee select uh, in inside a place I knew was supposed to be silent, like here to here. And I could just erase that out. And I could have a much better noise floor there. And you've just seen my noise floor. So that cleans it up. But uh, if we then go back to look at Darren, yeah, wow, just amazing. You can tell when someone has a really good silent uh, environment to record when their audio looks like that in the silences. So first and foremost, if I take away that 100 hertz, that won't affect Darren's voice and it will clean up the silences. So basically you're getting a win-win because you're, you're cleaning and you're not affecting audio quality. Uh, something like the scientific filter would work nicely for this. And I think cut off below 100 hertz would be good. Uh, so what we do to set this up, if I go back to default, that's your default. You want a high pass mode here and uh, we want the Butterworth, the Butterworth effect. You see, if I change it to these different effects, you'll see how the, the curve changes. Uh, elliptical, ooh, that's weird. Uh, Butterworth is what we want, and then let's put 100 hertz. And actually, if we go into preview now, we should see that, yeah, can you see now that that, that red down here, this bit here, has completely disappeared over here. Now, I can always notch that up a bit more. It just cleans it out. And again, Darren's voice should sound okay with this little kind of roll-off. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. And switch that effect off. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. And again. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. So no damage done. Apply. And we have a really, really, really clean-looking session there now. Uh, next, I want to beef it up a bit, so uh, let me copy into a new file so I can go back and listen to the original later. And again, we'll go in and we'll set up the parametric EQ, uh, so parametric equalizer here, and default, and we'll see what we can do. Let's just have a good zoom in on that and see what's possible. This, this is, this is the Symphony Radio... Let's switch off preview for a second so it's faster. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. 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 Okay, we're finding something nice there in the treble. Let's bring point number four. This Hmm. is the Symphony Radio Classic. You hear the boxy sounds as you go into the mids. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. This is the Synth. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. And finally here. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. This is the Synth. Okay, apply that, and oh, look look at how it, uh, if I just zoom out, it kind of fattened up the voice nicely. So undo, you see, if we just undo there, watch the waveform, it goes thin, and then do that, and we kind of enhanced the voice quite nicely there. Uh, now we will add on a bit of single band compression. Uh, where are we here? Amplitude and compression, uh, single band compressor. Here we go. The symphony. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. And that actually sounds good to me, that compression. That's the same compressor we used on Chelsea. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. 
There we go. Probably we could even ease up the threshold a little bit for Darren. Uh, let's just take it up a bit more. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. So there we go. Just very quickly, we've got to this. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. To that from this. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. Which is pretty amazing considering, you know, how long it took us to do that. Let's have one more listen. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. Hmm, okay. Thick, thick. Classic. Radio Classic. Radio Classic. Okay, now, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear just a tiny click there in Darren's voice. And this is a common thing with voice artists, where you get a tiny little click. Um, Can you actually hear that? I don't know if you can hear that on the stream. I'd be delighted to know if you could. Hmm. But there is definitely a click there. And yes, you can actually see it. Now, this is the thing with clicks. You can often see them right here when you zoom in on the waveform. So the way to erase that, just tell me in the chat, by the way, if you can hear that that click. It's like a tiny, tiny, minuscule kind of... <coughs> as Darren's talking. <coughs> it happens around there in the waveform. <coughs> and if I want to get rid of that click, if I want to be a real perfectionist, again, locate it, and here you go. You can, you can spot it a mile off, because when you zoom into this level on a waveform, you can see all of the waves. We're, we're talking about, like, getting down to almost samples here. Um... You can, you can see that it just looks slightly different to the rest of the waves. Now, the way to clean this up is really easy. You drag from here to here. So essentially, you're going from the same position in that wave to that wave, and you're totally eliminating that wave. Um, you could make it slightly tighter if you wanted. I mean, you could go from here to, say, here. You have to have sharp ears to hear it. And that's the click. I mean, that's how short it is. Let's loop it. That is the click. The offending click there. Uh, so let me delete. And hopefully now, if I play this back, it shouldn't have damaged the audio, but it should have cleaned that click. Funny rate. Funny rate. Gone. Funny rate. Funny rate. Gone. Completely gone. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. There you go. So easy way to uh, to clean up clicks and bits like that. Uh, really, really good fun to do as well. I did want to DS Chelsea a little bit. Uh, let's have a listen back to this. Many few presents. Now, of course, uh, you will be familiar with the. Where is it? Uh, yes, DSer in amplitude and compression. This is a basic thing where you can select a frequency. Let's actually have a look here in spectral. No, not in preview. In spectral frequency view over here and have a look now. Aha. Uh -huh. Can you see that sibilant frequency around here? That is our sibilance. Can you hear that sibilance? You can actually see the DS are acting on that sound and bouncing down. So uh, what we're going to do is measure that frequency range. It's from there to there. And we're looking at around the 16K mark down to the 6K mark. Okay, so that de is not really where we want it to be. So I'm going to move this up to the 6K mark and move that up. So we kind of encapsulate the worst of the sibilance. Now you can see the gain reduction is really kicking in. And you can have a broadband or multiband kind of approach to this. I mean... Broadband sounds better to my ears. I always set things to, to my ear. I think, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to see how far I can get away with taking that down. And if we look in preview now, you'll see that it's... Look at how much it's removing there from the from the frequencies in the... S and obviously center frequency and bandwidth is all set there already. Output sibilance only. Ooh, that hurts my ears. Uh, so now, if I zoom out, that's how you set a deesser, by the way. Now let's play this back. Many few presents. Oh, but I've set the threshold too high, which is going to eliminate a lot of my audio. Let's not be too uh, trigger happy. Many few presents. Still, we can take it up a bit more because if you set a compressor, uh, not a compressor, a deesser, too harshly, it is going to start uh, removing audio you don't want to remove. Many few presents. There you go. And you can see that's where you want it to be. You want it to only be tickling the red when a s comes in. So many few presents. You see that? As she says, s, the red starts tickling in. Many few presents. I wonder if we can get away with any more. Many few presents. Okay, you see immediately a little bit of red appearing. So let's move that up. Many few presents. 
Electronic Heaven. Who's ready to dance? You're listening to Electronic Heaven with Many Few. Really, really good compared to the original. Many Few presents. Yeah, definitely、uh, sibilants that we are eliminating there. Apply, boom, done.、Uh, another easy win there inside Adobe Audition. Right, it's.、Uh, My goodness, is it that time already? We are 45 minutes into the show and only 15 minutes left to go.、Uh, so, time to get back to your comments.、Uh, please do keep them coming in. It's lovely to have you here on YouTube Live, on Facebook Live, on Periscope, and on Twitch as well. I always enjoy to see、uh, what, what is going on and what is being said.、Uh, it's just so much fun. So, let's、uh, have a look through. What have we got here now? So, Uh, yeah, left and right working okay on the pan. That's good to know.、Uh, Techno Extreme. I have a very nasal sounding voice. Best way to fix that without plastic surgery?、Um, well, obviously,、uh, practicing as much as you can,、uh, maybe taking some vocal coaching because it's possible if you kind of find the right place in your stomach, you can kind of bring out those sounds.、Um, if you get yourself a voice coach, I know many professional voice artists that,、uh, that we work with at Music Radio Creative,、uh, pretty much、uh, all of them use professional voice coaches. Uh, either they do currently or they have at one time or another, and they rave about them. I've heard raves about working with a voice coach, so that might help you. And of course, if you want in audition, you can, you can pull out a few frequencies、uh, using something called Notch Filter, and I'll show you that in just a moment.、Uh, what else have we got here? Rune,、uh, yes, is giving some advice there on reducing 800 hertz to 1 kilohertz. That's a good idea. I'm not doing a live show like Mike. Do I need the DBX and other front end equipment, or can I do it all in audition?、Uh, if you're not doing a live show, Um, yeah, I mean, you can do everything in audition if you want.、Uh, I do like, I'm a fan of analog gear. That's why I have DBX, a nice analog mic preamp and compressor. I, I have a Soundcraft analog. Actually, Soundcraft marries digital with analog. This is、uh, Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK,、uh, was released in 2015. And so, only two years on, it's just a brilliant combo of analog and digital together with a USB connector. Uh, Joe, Mike, when you keep playing it back, I hear you hitting a key before your space bar. What are you hitting to get back to the beginning of the audio? Excellent question, Joe.、Um, I'm actually only using the space bar to play back, but I do have it set in such a way that I can play. Electronic heaven. And then I hit space bar again. See, it jumps back. My playhead jumps back to where I was. Electronic heaven. And the way to enable this feature is hitting shift and X. You only need to do it once in Adobe Audition, and then that feature will be enabled. So if I hit it again, it will disable the feature. Watch what happens. Shift, X. You don't get any visual feedback that it worked, but now if I play back. Electronic heaven. And stop. See, the playhead now stops here. So if I play now. Who's ready to dance? So you can choose which is the best method for your workflow, but for me, I, I'm, I'm one who always plays back and back really fast so I can listen to something again and again and again until it sounds right. So Shift X is a lifesaver, and then we get this. You're listening. And again. You're listening. And again. You're listening. So that's how I have it set up. But Shift X in all the modern versions of Audition should get you to where you need to be, Joe.、Uh, what else have we got?、Uh, so, what's the name of the program? Adobe Audition. Thank you, Isabella, for jumping in. Tim, listening on phone.、Uh, a little hard to hear things. Yeah, probably, probably not the best place to be, be able to hear all of that stuff. Uh, Michal heard the click.、Um, what else have we got?、Uh, Mark, you have very good ears. Uh, uh, what else? Have we got anything else? Mike, you explain too well, says GK. If you explain too well, there won't be any question. <laughs> okay. All right, then. I'll,、uh, I won't explain well. <laughs> so just ask questions now in the chat.、Um, what else have we got here?、Uh, Vamsi's saying hi, everyone. Marine's in as well. I want to make backing vocals out of only one vocal. Yeah, you can do that. You can double up and stuff like that. Oh, David's got the technical term for what I just did there. It's called return head to insertion point. Nice. I like that. Le Pedra,、uh, when you record using a mixer, how do you eliminate low hiss or fuzz in the recording? Should this matter because you can eliminate in audition any tips? Always try and get it good at source. That's why I like Soundcraft.、Uh, not to big, pick any one big brand, but、uh, Soundcraft was my first mixing desk. 
and it's my current mixing desk. And uh, I've never had a problem with uh, too much hiss on a Soundcraft. I have had a problem with hiss on other makes that shall not be named on today's stream. Uh, but yeah, uh, most uh, every Soundcraft piece of kit I've had has not had too much of an issue. And um, if you do get hiss for whatever reason, it's easy to do that with the uh, noise removal tool. Actually, I can show you uh, something. Oh, uh, does the Shift X work in Premiere? Don't know. Don't know. Uh, not sure about that. Not a Premiere expert. I do dive into it, but uh, never had to really use that feature too much in Premiere because I do all my audio over here in Audition. So uh, let me just undo the sibilance processing here. Bring it back. Ence. Ence. So we've got the sibilance back. Another way to remove sibilance is using the, uh, let's go into effects, and we've got noise reduction. So you'd use something like noise reduction to get rid of hiss, but also sound remover is really good for that. But with sound remover, what you can do is uh, you can learn the sound model of something. So uh, say I wanted to DS this audio using the marquee tool here in spectral, I can select my sibilance. And I know for a fact that that is my sibilance right there because you can hear it. And I just tell the sound remover, which is a new tool. I think they only introduced it in Adobe Audition CC. Learn sound model. And look at how it removes that sibilance. I mean, that is just mind-blowing, looking at the preview window down below. But not only that, it actually has a ds -er preset. So if I set that up now, uh, you'll see now it's not gone so harsh. Uh, but if I select all the audio and apply the sound remover, let's do that we should notice a dramatic change in the sibilance. I wonder if this will be as good as the DSA. Well, it certainly reduces the volume of the S's. Many few presents Electronic Heaven. Now, I need to probably play with that because we've got some weird kind of reverse reverb happening as well, so I probably need to tweak the settings a bit further. But yes, it's possible to remove hiss and s and any, any treble hiss or low hiss uh, using sound remover or noise reduction. So there you go. Uh, what else are we going to do today in this session? Anything you want to know, let me know uh, in, the, uh, in the comments, wherever you're watching on Facebook or over on YouTube Live or on Periscope or on Twitch. Uh, David Bain on Facebook Live is liking the green screen. I know it's, uh, it's really funky, isn't it? Do you want to preview into my world? Do you want to have a little look into my world? I'll show you my world. It's not pretty, though. Whoa, that is the magic green screen. And as you can see, it works really well. It's, it's just literally uh, a curtain uh, colored the, the right color. And obviously I make sure not to wear a green t-shirt, otherwise you just see my head floating in space, which is weird. Uh, and um, yeah, it works a dream. I mean, I can, I can do stuff, as you know, like this. And also like this sharing my screen and appearing in the bottom. So really, really good fun. Really enjoying that. How about removing reverb? Oh, wow. Now you are really going for it. Yes, uh, removing reverb is definitely, definitely possible. Um, and again, it's, it's a problem you might come across, particularly if you record on echoey uh, kind of environments. I'm just thinking, I haven't really got the audio to source now. Um, that I could use because really I need to record on a rather echoey uh, camera or something like that to make it sound good. Um, but do, you know, do drop those samples or bits that you want feedback on into the Music Radio Creative community. You can reach that at community.musicradiocreative.com. And as you can see all the time, people are posting uh, new uh, comments and ideas here and we're chatting away. So if you haven't joined up, community.musicradiocreative.com. There is actually a secret category called free stuff in there. Uh, and we're posting like free links to uh, like presets and downloads, resources, sound effects, loops, music beds, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's growing at the moment, but over time, that category will fill out nicely. That's a members only category in there. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Rovigo. Green screen does work well, even though it's it's not totally flat. I mean, this this studio I broadcast from on the Isle of Wight is about uh, I think two meter by two meter squared, so it's it's just a little bit bigger than a broom cupboard. Uh, so I I don't have the luxury in this current setup to to have a green screen like really far away from me, like you should do in professional video, from what I understand, and shine all the backlights and all of that. Uh, I just have a couple of LED lights, and actually. 
coming up in a future stream. Uh, if you make sure you are subscribed to the channel, youtube.com slash music radio creative, I will in the future be covering uh, a behind the scenes tour. I'll, I'll take my external camera and move it around. So make sure you hit subscribe at youtube.com slash music radio creative. And all the upcoming streams you can see here, top and center, you can set reminders on them and you can get reminded um, by, uh, I think, notification, push or email uh, when things are live. So tons of reverb to remove. Actually, yes, Joe, you've just jogged my memory uh, posting there in the YouTube uh, live chat. Uh, that, uh, I think it might already be scheduled. Yes, it is. Uh, this coming Monday, we're doing how to remove noise in Adobe Audition. And I'm going to be covering, uh, Joe has given me a sample of audio to work with, so we'll be using that in the stream. But also, uh, I'll cover in that stream in detail, removing uh, reverbs and echoes, because I think it's a handy thing to know. Uh, so set reminder on this one here by, by clicking the, the bell and you'll remember it. Uh, also, you should get a bell by the subscribe button as well. Hi to Gameplay Magic. Uh, behind the scenes tour would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely planning it, Peter. David saying, hi, Mike. What would be the best way to enhance vocal only interview audio recorded on a mobile Zoom recorder? Um, well, definitely using the uh, the ENCN method, maybe not setting a compressor uh, so harsh if it's going to be for a podcast, uh, but EQing it up uh, and making it sound good is a, is a great starting point and parametric EQ is a good place to go to. It's pretty easy being green, says Christopher. Uh, anything else in here worth mentioning at the moment? Some really good comments coming in today, so I've really appreciated them. Uh, so just finally in Adobe Audition, let us go into the multi-track. Many few presents. And I'm going to take in Darren's processed voice here, which I did earlier. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. And obviously now, in addition to the, the filters I put on it. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. You'll hear it has a little more going on it uh, with my Adobe Audition uh, preset template here. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. I'm running a DS or a scientific filter, dynamics processing, speech volume leveler, hard limiter, and parametric EQ on it. Uh, and actually, if I move the scientific filter so the cutoff is up to around 250. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. We're starting to get that real imaging sound now, so I can... Pop in something nice into my sound effects here, and uh, let's do that, level that out. Darren's voice is a great volume level, so I'm comfortable with that. Again, I'll just select both of these, match the uh, clip loudness together, 16 luffs. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. And if I wanted, I could uh, move this to a, another bar in my preset. Go classic. Go classic. 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 And if we want, we can actually create, I know I was asked this earlier, so let's quickly demo this, an infinite echo with Adobe Audition. Echo level 100%, feedback level 100%, echo level 100%, feedback level 100%, and... Here we go, stand by, because we're going to get an infinite echo. Ready for this? Let's play. This is the Symphony Radio Classic. 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 And now Darren's going to keep echoing away Classic. Classic. into the distance Classic. for eternity, <laughs> which could be good if you're doing like a big mix. Uh, obviously, it's degrading in quality because of my successive echo equalization. I'm removing certain frequencies from the audio, but you can see it's still going on and on and on. It's been 27 seconds. Well, I really hope you have enjoyed this stream and got value from it. Uh, if you have, make sure that you share it with your friends uh, just by sharing youtube.com slash music radio creative. Uh, go ahead, like the page. Like I see Chanel's there in uh, Facebook Live. Arturu is in. Uh, new voice processing techniques for CS6 don't work in that anymore. CC is my bag right now, Adobe Audition CC. And I see Paul Orr has done a wonderful super chat. Thank you so much for that, Paul. Really appreciate the super chat uh, helping to support the show and, and keep the stream alive. It's um, a daily stream, by the way. If you didn't know, if you tuned in for the first time today, we do this stream every day, Monday to Friday, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. UK time. Get it into your calendar or set yourself a reminder uh, wherever you watch, and it'll be great to see you again. Thanks so much for the kind 
the comments. We've had GK in there, Billy's as well from Greece, Zigarin, uh, lots of nice comments. I will see you over at the community. That's community.musicradiocreative.com. Hopefully the audio quality has been really good for you today. Like I say, I've made a few tweaks and I might post a bit more about them in the uh, in the chat uh, on community.musicradiocreative.com a little bit later. But for now, have yourself a fantastic day. I will be back tomorrow uh, with a stream all about auto-tuning your voice. That's going to be a fun one. I'll speak to you on that stream. Have yourself a fantastic rest of the day. 